update on, of course, the banking space. Investors' attempt to lock in gains drove the price of Unity Bank South as it booked a 3% loss today. Now, demand at 64 now and lower valuation, however, appears strong and could provide support tomorrow. First City Monument Bank, Diamond Bank, and Zenith Bank were the only companies divergent to the bearish sentiment in the banking sector, closing the day with slim gains of 1%, 0.5%, and 0.1% in that order. Now, concerns about the outlook for future earnings in Nigeria's banking sector continues to linger as markets look to the Central Bank of Nigeria for clues at the MPC meeting on Tuesday. Where analysts agree that although recent regulatory policies have exposed the vulnerability of these banks, the potential for stronger balance sheets may be in a broader economy. Bumi Ashaolu, Head Equity Research at FBN Capital, joins me now for more on this. Thank you so much, Bumi, for joining us. Thank you. Well, I've spoken to quite a number of analysts on what their expectations are for tomorrow's uh, MPC meeting decision. Let's hear yours. Uh, how do you see this playing out? Uh, we, uh, we said this morning that uh, we expect uh, not much from the MPC. Um, although I think these days it's easy to conclude that you shouldn't um, uh, expect the MPC not surprise us because last time around I don't think we expected um, the hike in the CR on public sector deposits. So um, the C, well, the MPC has achieved um, most of what it wants to achieve in terms of uh, stability, uh, inflation, which I think is the main thing they're focused on. Uh, for the banking sector specifically, I don't think that if you look back over the last 18 months, apart from what happened on CR, that um, there's been any strong pass-through effect. So. Our view is that there's not going to be any major changes um, that they're going to announce tomorrow. Well, what about uh, perhaps tinkering with the, the CRR, the 50% CRR on uh, public sector deposit? I have heard one or two analysts saying that they're expecting uh, the MPC to perhaps bring it down by perhaps between 25 to 30%. Do you think that that's a likelihood? Um, our view is that there's not going to be any change. Um, <laughs> uh, I think because of what happened last week, or over the last two weeks, with interbank with spiking. Uh, there is a view that it would help if uh, the MPC uh, moved towards some sort of realization. Um, but that would go against some of, uh, well, most of what they've been trying to do over the last 18 months, 24 months. So uh, we, we, we set, set our stall um, in the camp that says that they won't do anything with it uh, because post um, last week, you've seen the rates come down a bit. So um, until, until you see a sustained uh, liquidity squeeze, we don't think that there will be pressure uh, on the MTC to do anything major on the CRR uh, reversal on public sector deposits. Okay, let's talk about the bank's earnings for a while. Now, since the last meeting in July, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the future or the prospects for bank earnings. The market is quite nervous about uh, what those Q3 numbers could look like. Do you think the market is worrying too much or what could be an upside for the banks? Because uh, I do hear some of them say that there's actually some potential in the broader economy. Well, uh, you mean from an MTC point of view? Yes. I think the first thing to say is that, again, if you look back over the last few years, uh, two years, um, the, the decision by the MPC to focus mainly on, uh, on taking liquidity out of the system um, has been mainly geared towards inflation. So, uh, you know, if you look at the monetary policy rate, it's not really done anything for lending rates, right? So whether the, rate, uh, the MP, MPR rate was, uh, was moved up or down, banks wouldn't lend more if they didn't want to and would lend more if they wanted to. I think it's slightly different. There are more lending opportunities for, for banks. So uh, even with the CRR uh, hike on um, public sector deposits, there's still enough lending opportunities out there. So we're not too concerned about the rest of the year from what we know today in terms of what uh, the banks have uh, spelled out from Q2 onwards. So uh, there are many other headwinds the banks are seeing, the banks are seeing AMCON charges, um, in, in addition to what you're seeing with CRR. So, yes, we know that CRR probably is going to hit bank EPSs by between 5 and 10 percent this year. Beyond that, we're not too concerned for the rest of uh, 2013. Now, I have heard one or two analysts say that they expect the banks to be more creative in terms of how they, uh, going forward, strengthen their balance sheets. Of course, they could look to the economy. But for you, what areas uh, do you think that this is something that the banks could do? You know, I, I think if you go back to 2012, maybe that view would have been stronger uh, because maybe banks would be under, would have been under a bit more pressure to, to try and grow earnings. Uh, this year, even with all the um, pressures they're seeing from several fronts, uh, they actually are doing pretty well. So um, I think the secret really lies in the volume of lending opportunities that exist. So in aggregate power, uh, these are uh, small but growing very fast uh, opportunities the banks are seeing. So regardless of the headwinds they're seeing, I don't see 
that they're under pressure to do things radically different from what they've been doing in the past. There's enough volume loan growth out there for them to, uh, to, to grow their earnings with. Now, going forward, of course, we're going to see, we're not, we're not, well, the market is not exactly looking forward to uh, horrible numbers, but the numbers I hear will not be great. But uh, how long do you think this could last? Where, at what point could we begin to see numbers that we can classify as great? Uh, it's all relative, right? Um, 2012 numbers look pretty strong. Uh, 2013 numbers, if you adjust for the headwinds they're seeing, actually look pretty good. I mean, if you, if you remove Amcon levies or the, the additional bits we saw this year, if you remove the CRR hike, uh, and some adjustments on yields, the bank's earnings growth this year would have been even much stronger. So um, net of all the headwinds I've seen, the numbers now, they're not bad. People shouldn't kind of talk themselves to the ground. Uh, so we think that probably 2014 is probably what you want to look to first. Within the banking sector, though, there are banks who are showing uh, good numbers in terms of growth uh, from Q Q1 to Q2 to Q3. Uh, but across the board, it's probably flatter. So you sort of have to tell your stall um, on a sort of risk basis. So there's some banks that are probably too risky for certain investors, uh, but you just have to take um, what sort of borrowing earnings growth come with the most uh, conservative, uh, safe names uh, and, not, and not complain too much. If you want greater growth, then you have to pick some of the riskier banks.